This is for you who might have had problems with the bus installation on either DBM 5000 or 6000. The PCB we have here for the present is one of the earliest of the 5000 units. So the test would be the same even though if you had one of the newer 6000 with bus. Um, so an old controller and three doors is added. This is the door with extended memory, but if it's that or the one with EEPROM, the test would be the same or the result would also be the same. If we should look at the controller itself, it's right here to the left, we can right click and ask for the controller status. We will then be informed of the voltage settings, the relay and timbre, modem, etc. Not so important when we make a, have to make a test on the bus. So what we have to do is we have to press Control shift and then right click at the controller status and now we have few a few other columns who is revealed and the most interesting is of course this which is called the main bus error we have packages sent and received by the controller if something is going wrong with a door the signal or packages from the door will be missing and then the main bus error indicator here will start counting we can show that quite rapidly. Now I've put a connector to this door interface so we can see what happens. And now you can see the main bus error is counting rapidly. As soon as we connect it again, this kind of counter will stay stable. Now we're not talking about the how we twist the cables, nor do we talk about how to terminate the bus. It's for later. But just now I want to show you what really happens. As you could see, if we disconnect the door, the icon of the door changes immediately. Now, this door is not reachable. If we right click, we have no information of the door. It's just grey. But if something else is happening on the bus, it could be that this small chip we have here would be short circuiting because of lightning. If that happens we immediately see no communication to any of my doors. If this would be a larger installation where we had a, a lot of meters cable it could be a remote door so only on the remote what do I know 100 meters out we would have a short circuit on this line. Then because of the cable, we might still have a contact to some of the doors nearby. So you can't really tell which of the doors would acknowledge the signal coming from the controller or not. It's very random. So you have to make a decision here of what to dismantle. Because you just can't do it without taking something off. If I would do it correctly, and I know it's this door that is making the error, I could just take off these connectors. I could make a small bridge and then bypass the door. And we can immediately see that we have communication to the other doors. But if this chip is not burnt to make a short circuit, it could also be uh, not communicating at all but burn thoroughly so there's no connection to the chip then this door would just remain as you can see without contact but you can never you can never be sure about that so what I have to do here to check further doors I would still have to press control shift right click and ask for the controller status you can see that my main bus error indicator is counting. That's of course because the door is not responding to the hailing of the controller. I can sh shorten this door out by just clicking, right clicking and ask for maintenance. If I do that, no packages will be sent to the door and I am now able to look at the controller status with control shift and see that my main bus indicator error indicator is now not counting. So if you got an installation where you got a lot of strings, let's imagine that um, 
that's the controller is the PCB we have here then we have a string here with a repeater and then we are going to different floors of the building I would then of course just check for the closest doors and remove my connection to the repeater here for instance and then I would set the rest of the doors or units in maintenance if the counter is not counting then I can rely on my doors here and then I can take the next floor connect that also and see if the counter is not counting just for the time being we have the modules which is the input modules they do not belong to the function here they have not the function called maintenance so what I have done to solve that is I have made a backup of the installation and simply deleted the modules that I cannot set into maintenance of course I might still risk that those modules are the one causing the error but it's the only way to do it if I then should talk about how to to terminate the bus it's also indicated here with red what units are terminated on my installation where I have a controller door, door and the last door I would then terminate my controller not terminate this door not this one and this would then be the end of the line so the switches are up if I instead said I have a number of doors here and then I want to add a repeater if I'm going to another house for instance or if I have got about 30 units or 750 meters then I would also need to add a repeater to start the new bus if I did that then I have to consider here is it going to be terminated or not these jumpers if you take them off you remove the termination if you set it on it's now terminated so let's imagine that this door is not the last unit but instead I would take my repeater and connect it to to this place instead then my repeater is ending my bus so I need to have the jumpers on the PCB second I need to choose the bus speed if I had 30 units I would already now change the speed which is default 38.4 to 150,000 instead if I did that then I have to remove the jumpers connect it to the lowest position and I will also need to go under the controller and I would have to set the normal bus to high speed bus instead but that's only when we reach about 30 units that that's relevant okay now I'm I don't really need to have this as an end of line let's say that I want to make a, a t-bar installation uh, from this point on instead well I can just cut the cables connect it right here and then remove my termination in that case I can make a new string even though that this door here is terminated as the end of line and the controller is starting the bus then this one would just be on the middle and on the second part on the output side I would have to choose am I starting the bus with the repeater here if I do that then the jumpers have to be on if it was so that my door to the left here is my starting door I have a few doors and then a few more doors then this door would then be the last door if I did that then the termination of the repeater should also be like this without jumpers and also most important about the power this is separated so you can actually have a different uh, house on the one side and another here so we have to start a new earth connection if we could use this an example as an example I would then connect my bus 
to this part of the PCB as the in part. Over here I would connect my power, which is connected to the power supply I have here. I can also choose to let the power supply for the units on my right side supply this repeater, it doesn't matter, it has to have to be supplied from one place. Then the ground signal, the earth wire, is now stopped at the repeater and then started up again on the new side. So otherwise my earth wire would be connected throughout this bus series we have here on these units. You have to be careful not to connect the earth wire to more than one power supply. So let's say if this PCB we have over here it had its own power supply then I would just connect the earth to the wire, the bus wire we have, but not letting it touch anything on the on this, the metal box of this unit. It would be isolated. So one earth string per string, and then if you have a new repeater, you can then start a new earth string. A good idea when you do the bus installation is as a minimum to connect the earth or the, the bus installation like this where you have them connected because in that case your twisting of the cable would be as it should as you've done from start and you can also just isolate these two and have the installation going through the wires to the next door it gives a good connection and if you can in any way I know it, it will cost a little bit extra then the small PCB we have to the right is really a good thing when you have to make a test or to, to find uh, transcendent damage you have on the bus as you can see like this it makes it easy for me to just test whether or not the, the unit or the doors is working and if I got a door nearby I can also just leave that to the third connector we have here um, you have to make sure that the cable you're using is of course shielded and also you need to, to check if it is twisted the rule says that you have to have one twist every one and a half centimeters and many people are doing like this when they isolate the bus cable they may have about 15 centimeters or so for each access unit or each controller there where you just connect it like this and if you want to have a good installation and not have any echoes I mean the error counter then you should not or never do like I just did here. So keep the twisting of the cable right on to the screw terminal. I can see that even small installations can be very sensitive if you do not do this all the way up to the screw terminal. So this is the best way to connect it. If you got further questions about this issue you're welcome to write or call us. We will try to do our best to make a, a second video to help you out.